on the road again Just can't wait to get on the road again The life I love is making music with my friends And I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Going places that I've never been Hello YouTubers, it's me, Michael Brewer, reporting to you from a beautiful flowery hillside in the hills of Switzerland. Behind me there's a field of uh, rapeseed flowers. I chose this location purposely because if you look behind me, it's like a vibration of color. I mean that color is so vibrant and it's just so vibrating in yellow that it really leads me to the topic I'd like to discuss today. Color actually is a vibration. When you think about it, it's a wavelength of light coming in at a certain vibrating frequency that vibrate yellow or like the sky, vibrate blue or all the other colors. Vibration, you hear a lot about vibration. You came from the Good Vibration song by the Beach Boys to the whole new age is uh, completely uh, saturated with the idea of uh, vibrating and vibrations. I think there we stand the danger of uh, poo-pooing that idea or thinking it's oversimplified or airy-fairy or so she-she. But actually, um, it's one of the most essential concepts in our universe. In fact, it's, it's, it's at the bedrock of all that we are and all that we do and all that we see. Think about atomic structure and subatomic structure. It's basically everything that exists is 99% empty space. And the rest of it are these little subatomic, atomic, molecular structures that are moving in space, just like out in the universe. It's mostly empty space and they're just little bits and pieces of matter that are vibrating or rotating in a certain orbit. You could call that a vibration. Our physical world, this body, this field, this sky, or my dogs over there, uh, it's all, it's an illusion actually. It's not solid matter whatsoever. Now there are different levels of this vibration and different levels of manifestation into physical matter and that would be just thought. What, what is a thought? I mean, is that, it's not matter, it's not, a, it's not a solid, it's not a gas, it's not a liquid. It's just unmanifested thought. But since we can think it and realize it and, and experience it, there must be some reality to it, right? And then if we somehow through our thoughts can magnetize these vibrations in such a way that they come together in a specific pattern of vibration, well then it can actually manifest into physical form or three-dimensional form as we, we think and see and perceive it. Even in physics, you know, the, the faster things vibrate, the faster the subatomic and atomic particles vibrate, the more ethereal things are. And so the atoms that are vibrating in a gas are vibrating at a higher frequency than those in the liquid and then in a solid. And you can go way out into space and find places where matter has become so dense that it becomes a black hole. And a black hole is a place where matter is so dense and so heavy that it begins to attract and draw in through gravitational force other matter. Now that's interesting. Vibration leading to attraction of other objects. Now let's take this back into metaphysical thinking and it's kind of the way everything works for us too. I mean everything that we have or do or say or are in our lives began as vibration. It began as something up here whether it was a desire or a stated belief or uh, something we don't want or something we're pushing against or an unconscious desire uh, whatever we first see it in our minds or envision it or think it or you know and then we speak it and somehow that sets up a vibrational pattern and that vibrational pattern just like the black hole has an attractive power and it attracts to itself things like itself now that's the famous law of attraction as uh, verbalized by Abraham Hicks that like attracts like and actually that bears out 
in a lot of physics as well. And a black hole attracts things like to itself. And so, as, as in the same thing works in our lives. We make a really big deal out of action, out of doing, out of saying, and out of going out and wrestling it to the ground and grabbing it. But actually, that is not the most effective way to have the things in our lives that we would like. If we would pay more attention to the vibrational universe, the vibrational nature of this universe, we would be more effective in attracting to us those things that we desire. Let me give you an example. About seven, eight years ago, I was in a position where I was looking for a house. And it couldn't just be just any old house. It had to be a, a big house with a big garden, a big yard, with a view of the Alps here in Switzerland. I thought about it, I meditated, I visualized, I wrote affirmations, you know, I did all that stuff. And by doing so, I put my vibrational concept or desire for this house into, well, Abraham Hicks calls it an escrow account, a vibrational escrow. And I, I like that term because it, it's like saying that everything that we we desire or we have in a vibrational mode in our lives is stored somewhere. It doesn't just go away. It's there. It's out there waiting for us. The universe immediately supplies what it is that we say our stated desires are. And so my house was out there in escrow uh, somewhere. And then this desire led to inspired action. Now, hear the difference. I didn't just take action. I didn't just go running down ads and running all over the place, you know, taking a wild action left and right. No, I waited until I got sort of a little hit inside saying, do this. And what I got, the information I got was, write an ad, place an ad in the newspaper stating your dream house, what it is you want. And so I did, I wrote an ad saying, are you looking for the right people to rent your uh, five bedroom house uh, on a big piece of land with a beautiful garden and a view of the Alps or more or less like that. And lo and behold, the first day I got like 10 calls, 10 calls on my ad. I went and looked at each and every one of them. They were mostly someone else's idea of what I'd said. Uh, most of them, in fact, all of them pretty much were not really what I was looking for. They were just people looking to rent their houses and maybe they met two or three of the criteria. Some of you met most of them, but none of them were really exactly what I was looking for. And so I was a little dismayed to be honest. I was like, oh wow, <laughs> kind of questioning, does this really work? And so I had my daughter with me in the car and we drove around the, the town where we would like to have lived and we stopped in front of a house and this house, we looked up and it was down below and it terraced up on three or four levels and the house was on the top of the hill and it was in a, a vibrational match to what I had put into my vibrational expo perfectly. It was exactly the house. And both my daughter and I immediately said, my, my dad said, that's the house we want. Now that's the house. Of course, we laughed because, you know, a reality check came in and we thought, well, you can't afford a house like that. It was in a beautiful neighborhood. It was just spectacular. We went back home and gosh, if not a half an hour later, the phone rang and a woman said, I would like you to come look at my house. I really liked your ad. And we jumped in the car and she gave us the directions and it was that house. It was exactly the house we'd parked in front of, not you know an hour before. That's the house I own in and live in now with my partner Raymond and my daughter. And so what happened was it, it was a vibration first. Vibration led to inspired action. Resistance came up on my end. I was unhappy that uh, the houses that I originally looked at weren't the right ones. And then I let go. I said, oh, well. And, uh, and then it came through. You know, it, it's up there. Uh, I've heard it said that the universe has a thousand eyes or a thousand helpers or a thousand little angels. And there isn't just one way for things to break through into manifestation. Instead, though, there are a thousand ways. And so this was the path of least resistance for me, for my ma vibrational, emotional, vibrational concept and desire to break through and to come into my life. And it's in my life today. Don't scoff at vibrational reality because everything was a vibration first and everything still is a vibration. Nothing is solid. It's all vibrating all the time. And that is good news because that means our thoughts, which are also a vibrational nature, have a concrete and specific and effective impact upon our reality.